Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. In today's video we will take a look at the history of the Darksaber. This means that we will take a look at the moment the Darksaber was created and how it ultimately was destroyed. This also means that I will tell you about everyone who once held the Darksaber and how they got the Darksaber. So now I am going to break down everything we know about the Darksaber from Disney's current Star Wars continuity. First off, the Darksaber is actually an ancient lightsaber created by Tar Vizsla, the first Mandalorian ever inducted into the Jedi Order. This is where the history of the Darksaber began. Tar Vizsla was inducted into the Jedi Order as a child around 1050 BBY, so the Darksaber was probably created around that time. We learn about the history of the Darksaber in the Star Wars Rebels episode Trials of the Darksaber, when Kanan Jarrus shows the weapon to Fen Rao. Rao then details the history of the blade, stating it is the Darksaber, a symbol for the leader of House Vizsla, and later the group known as Death Watch. Legend tells that it was created over a thousand years ago by Tar Vizsla, the first Mandalorian ever inducted into the Jedi Order. After his passing, the Jedi kept the saber in their temple. That was until members of House Vizsla snuck in and liberated it. They used the saber to unify the people and strike down those who would oppose them. One time, they ruled all of Mandalore wielding this blade. Ra would then state, this saber is an important symbol to that house and respected by other clans. While we know the blade was stolen by members of House Vizsla and then used to unify Mandalore, not much else is known about the blade during this time period. Keep in mind, this is a time period of around a thousand years, so a lot could have happened with the blade in the meantime, but doesn't really show up until we can see it in the hands of Tar Vizsla's ancestor Pre Vizsla during the Clone Wars. When we first see it in the Clone Wars, it is when Pre Vizsla and Obi-Wan Kenobi are ready to fight, and Pre Vizsla echoes much of what Ra claims during this battle. He tells Obi-Wan Kenobi, This lightsaber was stolen from your Jedi Temple by my ancestors during the fall of the Old Republic. Since then, many Jedi have died upon its blades. This information also appears to be accurate, as there is a painting seen in the Clone Wars Season 2 Episode 12 of the Mandalorian plot that does appear to show a Mandalorian wielding the blade. It is unclear who this Mandalorian is, but he does appear to be defeating an enemy that wields a lightsaber, more than likely a Jedi. After informing Kenobi of the history of the blade, Vizsla attempts to kill him in battle using it. However, he is unable to do so and both parties survive this battle. Later, Vizsla would attempt to assassinate Duchess Satine, the leader of Mandalore, in order to spark a civil war on the planet. However, the plot would fail and Count Dooku would punish Vizsla by scarring his cheek with his lightsaber. Vizsla and the Death Watch would break ties with the Separatists and retreat to Karlek, where they set up operations. It is there we see Prey Vizsla use the Darksaber once again, this time against the natives of Karlek, when he attempts to strike down the Ming Po chieftain. And then in combat against Ahsoka Tano on two different occasions. The first time, Prey Vizsla and Death Watch would end up capturing and subduing her, and the second time, she would escape and destroy the Death Watch encampment in the ensuing chaos. After the camp was destroyed on Karlek, Prey Vizsla and the Dead Watch would relocate to Zenbar and continue to plot against Duchess Satine. They would ally themselves with Maul and Salvage Press, who themselves had created the Shadow Collective. This Shadow Collective included the Huts, the Pikes and the Black Sun. Vizsla would eventually take control of Mandalore, with the help of the Shadow Collective. He would use the Shadow Collective to launch an assault against the planet and then had his Dead Watch forces subdue the criminal army in order to make them look like heroes. Their plan worked, and he was able to depose Duchess Satine and announce himself as leader of Mandalore, assuming the title of Mandalore. The title of Mandalore was assumed by the sole leader of the Mandalorian people. With Mandalore under his control, he would betray Maul, Oppress and the Shadow Collective and have them imprisoned. However, Maul and Oppress would eventually escape, with Maul challenging Vizsla to a one-on-one -on -one duel for leadership of the Death Watch. Maul would disarm Vizsla of the Darksaber during their duel and execute him with it. He then would claim leadership of the Death Watch and Mandalore. However, the Night Owls, led by Bo-Katan Kreese, the sister of Duchess Satine, would refuse to join him given he was not a Mandalorian and so didn't recognize his leadership. Sadly for Maul, his reign on Mandalore would be short-lived. Seeking revenge on Obi-Wan Kenobi, he baited him to Mandalore and then used the Darksaber to execute Duchess Satine in front of him. Kenobi would eventually escape with the help of Bo-Katan. Shortly after Obi-Wan was able to escape, Palpatine arrived on Mandalore, sensing Maul as a threat to his own power. He challenged Maul and oppressed to combat. He would kill Savage Press and then defeat Maul, disarming him of the Darksaber. Palpatine did not kill Maul, but instead imprisoned him in the Spire of Stygian Prime. The Darksaber was abandoned on Mandalore because Palpatine never claimed the blade. It later was made clear that Prime Minister Almec and his forces had recovered the Darksaber. After Mandalorian forces loyal to Maul and Almec rescued him from the Spire, the Darksaber was returned to him during the events of Darth Maul, son of Dathomir. He would proceed to use it in combat against the forces of the Separatist leader, General Grievous and Count Dooku. In fact, Maul and his forces would capture both Dooku and Grievous in a massive battle on Ord Mantle. He mostly used the weapon against the general after infiltrating his ship and placing it underneath his neck. After Maul had defeated Dooku and Grievous' forces, the Republic launched an attack on Ord Mantle, where Maul would ally himself with Dooku and use the Darksaber against Jedi Generals Obi-Wan Kenobi and Tipli. When Mace Windu and Aayla Secura arrived, he would also use the weapon against them. With the Republic overwhelming his forces, he and Dooku would flee to Dathomir, where Sidious alongside Grievous would attack him. Here, Maul would again use the blade in battle against Sidious as well as Grievous. 
During this battle, Maul even called Sirius the Great Deceiver, because he had almost killed him on Mandalore. The aftermath of this battle would eventually be an abandoned Darksaber on Dathomir, Grievous killing a revived Mother Telzin, and Maul fleeing with his Deathwatch forces from Sirius. The Darksaber would not be discovered until Maul takes Ezra Bridger to Dathomir. Kane and Jairus and Sabine went follow Ezra and Maul to Dathomir. Because of what Ezra and Maul had done, Kane and Sabine would be possessed by Night Sister spirits. While possessed by the Night Sister spirits, Sabine picks up the Darksaber and uses it against Ezra. Eventually, Ezra is able to drive the spirits from Sabine's body and takes control of the Darksaber. In order to defeat the Night Sister spirits, he uses the Darksaber, alongside his own lightsaber, to destroy the Night Sister altar. After Ezra was able to destroy the altar, Sabine would recover the blade and take it with her. At the end of the day, Sabine gives the blade to Kanan, who shows it to Fenrau, where he provides a backstory on the blade as we already covered in the beginning of the video, so we won't be covering it again. With some pressure from Hera Syndulla, Kanan proceeds to train Sabine with the Darksaber. Following her training, she along with Kanan and Ezra travel to Crownest, where they try to recruit Clan Wren, led by Sabine's mother Ursa Wren, to join the Rebel Alliance. The Darksaber changes hands quite a lot during the Legacy of Mandalore episode in Star Wars Rebels. It firstly starts with Sabine giving up the weapon to her mother Ursa, hoping that she can lead Clan Wren in reuniting the scattered Mandalorians and rebel against the Empire together. But Sabine's hopes were destroyed. Her mother betrayed her and her friends by attempting to negotiate with Gar Saxon. During this quick negotiation moment, Ursa tried to win Sabine's freedom in exchange for Kanan, Ezra and even the Darksaber. Gar Saxon agrees and gets the Darksaber. The moment he has the blade, he attempts to destroy Clan Wren, claiming they are harboring rebels. A battle is started between Gar Saxon and his men against Clan Wren. During the battle, Sabine engages Gar Saxon using Ezra Bridges' lightsaber. She is eventually able to disarm him and claim the Darksaber as her own. Sabine would continue to wield the Darksaber using it on a mission to Mandalore to rescue her father when he was being transported to Sundari. While they were on Mandalore, Sabine would attempt to give the Darksaber to Bo-Katan, but she refused, saying, I had my chance to rule and I failed. I am not my sister. I am not the leader you seek. Sabine would keep the weapon for some time with her until the success of the attack on Saxon Star Destroyer and the weapon that was able to kill Mandalorians who wore Beskar armor. Sabine would eventually convince Bo-Katan to take the weapon and once again lead Mandalore. A number of Mandalorian clans pledged their alliance to bo including Clan Vizsla, Clan Rook, Clan Elder, Clan Kreese, Clan Wren and the Protectors. bo would eventually lose the Darksaber after the Night of a Thousand Tears. The Empire desecrated Mandalore and bo surrendered the Darksaber to Moff Gideon, hoping that the Empire would stop the Great Purge of Mandalore. However, the Empire continued with the Purge. Moff Gideon would continue to have possession of the blade, using it to threaten the Jedi youngling Grogu on his command ship after he captured him on the planet Tython. The Darksaber would eventually have a new owner, that being the Mandalorian Din Djarin after he defeated Gideon in combat during a rescue mission to save Grogu. Djarin would attempt to give the blade to Bo-Katan, but she would refuse, claiming she would need to win it in single combat in order to rightfully claim the authority the blade symbolizes. And so, the Mandalorian would go on and fight with the Darksaber for some time, until he cut himself with the Darksaber during a battle and seek medical attention. For this he went to the Armorer. There he explained everything that happened and showed the Armorer and Pazvisa the Darksaber. Because he couldn't walk properly, Pazvisa took the Darksaber to the Armorer to show it to her. Who also started to explain the history of the Darksaber. After that, she gave it back to Jarin, who then got challenged for the blade by Pazvisa, who also was listening to the story about the blade. Paz Vizsla was able to get hold of the blade for most of their battle, but was in the end defeated by the Mandalorian, who reclaimed the Darksaber. Eventually, Din Djarin returned to bo and attempted to return the weapon to her. bo stated that it must be won in battle and refused, committed to not repeating the mistakes of the past, in which she retrieved the blade from Sabine Wren without combat which all but cursed her people. However, the weapon eventually found its way back into the hands of bo through technicality. You see, in the Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 2, Din loses the Darksaber to a mechanical creature beneath Mandalore's surface. bo then rescues Din Djarin, using the weapon to defeat the creature that bested him in the first place. In the Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 6, as Din Djarin and bo are attempting to recruit ex Wolf's small army of Mandalorians, Din Djarin cites this as the reasoning behind why bo is once again the rightful owner of the Darksaber. The Mandalorians agree, and bo is seen as the leader of her people for the first time since the Great Purge. bo wielding of the Darksaber was instrumental in retaking Mandalore, despite the legendary weapon being destroyed by Moff Gideon during the fight. So this was it, the history of the Darksaber. Just for you, here's a quick list, so it is a little bit easier to remember. Meanwhile, we all know that the Darksaber now has been destroyed. Do you think Disney made the right choice by doing so? Because it was a legendary weapon for the Mandalorian culture. I also think it would be weird to bring the Darksaber back. Because if they did, what was the reason to destroy it in the first place? Did you know that the Darksaber actually went through so many owners and who did you think was the best wielder with the Darksaber? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, leave a like if you want, subscribe if you want and I'll see you in the next video and may the force be with you.